On today's show, we're going to be talking about the L mount for the S series cameras, the 2.x and the 1.4x teleconverters that go along with your 70 to 200 F4. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about. Now I know what you're thinking. You got this fancy new 70 to 200 millimeter lens. 200 is a great reach, but you, you just sometimes you want more. You need more than 200. Like maybe you need 280 millimeters, or maybe you even need 400 millimeters. But there is no 400 millimeter L mount lens available yet. At least I don't think there is. You could probably adapt some other Canon lens. In fact, I know you could. Um, but ooh, those are expensive. Um, but there's an alternative, and the alternative would be the teleconverters. Now, this is not a replacement for a longer lens because, along with teleconverting the focal length, you are also converting the aperture. So, at your longest focal length, 200 millimeter f/4 on the L mount lens here, it becomes with the 2x teleconverter a 400 millimeter f. Eight. So it is not the fastest lens as far as light gathering capability goes, but it'll do in a pinch. And if it's not the kind of thing that you need all the time, if you don't want to spend the money on a 400 millimeter f4, f5, 6 lens, or even in the 400 millimeter f8 to have all the time, having a teleconverter like this could definitely be the ticket. Uh, lower cost than a whole replacement lens, but it gives you that focal length. And again, if you don't need that super shallow depth of field, it gives you that as well. And we're going to take a look at a couple sample photos here in a moment. But before I do that, I want to just put them on the lens so you can see how this all fits together, how it all looks, and also what you see on the camera. Because on the S1, which is what I'm using here today, it's kind of cool is you see the focal length of the lens as you're spinning the zoom ring. Zoom ring and you will see it translated, right? You'll see it say 400 instead of 200. Likewise, the aperture, where it said f4, it'll now say f8, and so on. So that's kind of a neat thing to see. So I just wanted to show that to you. Let's take a closer look at the lens adapters themselves. When we take off their caps on here, top down, they look pretty much the same. But you lay them on their side, and you can see a pretty dramatic difference here. It's pretty clear which is the 1.4 and which is the 2. And it's funny, because they got these big old protrusions on here, which I got to say, the first time you mount this thing on your lens, you're like, really? I'm sticking this thing into the back end of my lens. Is this a good idea? But of course, it's what it's designed for. This is for the 70 to 200. And uh, let's see, let's see if we can get a close up in here to show how much depth there is. You got a lot of space inside of that lens. So basically, what you're doing here is you're simply taking, we'll start with the 1.4x. You're taking this, lining it up, just like you would mount it onto the camera body. Find the red dots. There's the red dot on there. There's a red dot on there. Line those guys up, turn, and lock. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Hardware is very simple, just a lens release button on there, just like you would have on the body, and there's nothing else to the adapter itself. Now, at this point, you can obviously just attach this to your camera as you normally would. So let's get that on there. It does make for a, a, does make for a big combination. Now, I've got the battery grip on the S1 as well, so I really am making this as big as it can possibly be. So this is the S1. S1R would look the same with the battery grip, with the now 1.4x teleconverter, and the 70 to 200. I'm going to feed you what the camera sees. You will see the focal length as I zoom it. You can see it says 98 millimeters right now, and all the way up to 280 millimeter. And if you look at the aperture, it says 5.6 right now. I can close it down, but as I try to open it up more, it is stuck at 5.6. So this is the 1.4x teleconverter. It is just basic math. 70 times 1.4, 200 times 1.4, f4 times 1.4. That's it. That's all there is to it. And so you see how that changes. Now, if you are looking for just a little bit of extra reach, then the 200, 70 200 with the 1.4x will give you up to 280 millimeters. So it's just a little bit extra. It's not a massive amount of extra reach, but a little bit of extra reach. But you're also only dropping to f5.6. If you want the extra reach to go all the way to 400, then you do obviously have to use the 2x teleconverter, but then your aperture goes to f8. So there's really a balance in there. What do you need? Do you need that reach all the way to 400? Well, then this is your choice. Is it more important to you to have shallower depth of field, better light gathering capability, and have a little bit less reach, in which case going with the 1.4, is that the better option for you? It's really just a personal choice. What works for you? What works for your style of shooting? Now, with that said, let me go ahead and put the other teleconverter on here. Um, no, you cannot stack them on top of each other. It doesn't work that way. Let's just go ahead and release this. Put this one on. Again, it's just like inserting that in there just always makes me a little bit on the nervous side. But obviously, it's what it's designed for. In that goes. Now we've really got a beast on here. And let's just, because we can, that's on there. Let's put the lens shade on. And that is the now the full fighting glory of <laughs> this combination. For those of you who've been watching the show for a while and seen me showing Micro Four Thirds gear, um, even the G9 with its biggest lens doesn't look anything near this big. So this is clearly a hefty, hefty 
uh, hefty bag here. Uh, one thing, to, I don't know if I've ever shown this before. The lens collar, the tripod collar mount that is on the 70 to 200, as you would expect, you loosen it and you can rotate it. So if you want to, you know, if you're going to go vertical on there, you mount that onto the tripod. Um, I often tend to flip it upside down if I'm shooting handheld, and that gives me something to hold on to. And I wouldn't, you know, carry this all over the Serengeti like this, but it does give me something to grab onto up there. And I prefer to have on my hands the lens and not this mount personal choice in there. The tripod collar here is actually an Arca Swiss mount head. So that means that you don't have to, if you could use an Arca Swiss tripod, you don't have to put a plate on here. These grooves here slide right into the Arca Swiss mount, which is frankly a really, really nice touch. Okay, let's take a quick look through the lens again. If you look at the aperture now, you can see I can close it down, but open it up, f8 is the maximum. But of course, as I zoom this, we are now seeing a focal length all the way up to 400 millimeters. So you're going now from 140 to 400 millimeters. If you're going to be shooting at 140, needless to say, it's better to take the adapter off so that you have that better shallower depth of field. But obviously, you're not going to be swapping the adapter on and off 100 times a day when you're out shooting. It just depends on what you're doing. So again, it's just it's a balance. What works for you now? Performance with these on here. I will say that I haven't done a huge amount of shooting with these things. I've had them for a couple weeks. Just, you, yeah, you know, life. I just haven't gotten out and done as much as I should have with them. And the smoke rolled in. We've got horrible fires now. So anything nature related, forget about it. But fortunately, I do have a constant stream of deer running through my backyard. And so I was able to get some shots of the deer coming through over the weekend. And lo and behold, a little baby, a little fawn decided to show up this weekend. And just quick little focus tracking. So this is at the highest motor drive mode. And this is just a sequence of shots there. One, two, three, four, five. And they are all perfectly tack sharp in focus. And I will say that when I first went, ooh, there's a deer, quick, put the lens on, go outside. I had it in face tracking mode but not animal tracking. And it wasn't quite sure what to grab. And I got some out of focus shots. And then I thought, oh, well, right, animal tracking. Turned on animal tracking, boom, nailed it every time, which is kind of cool. The animal tracking, you recognize the deer, said that's the thing we want to shoot, and away we went. So just a quick little pan there. Um, high speed, obviously continuous autofocus, the highest shutter rate possible on the camera, um, aperture priority, wide open at f8 and just bam 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 shooting along and you saw the sequence in focus there and this one is another sequence in here animal's not moving quite as fast so it's maybe not as impressive but series of him in focus as well and uh, oh there's another running away so kind of at an angle running away excuse the shoddy camera work i don't know what i was pointing at but it did keep that little fawn in focus the entire time that's kind of all there is to say about it it Continues to work with the autofocus, continues to work with the image stabilization. Um, autofocus tracking works fantastically on this camera. It works just as well when you've got the teleconverter on there. Yes, you don't have quite a shallow depth of field, but you are getting that extra reach. So for someone who needs that extra reach, sometimes, not all the time, not worth investing in a dedicated lens, then this is a, a great way to go. That's it, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you are watching live, we're going to do a live Q&A right now, so uh, stick around for that. If you're not watching live, then that live Q&A will be popping up uh, right about here. See you in a moment. Hit it, boys.